So today's parasha is called Shelach and covers chapter 13 to 15 of the book of Numbers. Shelach means to send and speaks about the sending of the spies into the land of Israel. It is the first word of the second verse of Numbers 13, where the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send that for yourself, men, so that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I'm going to give to the sons of Israel. Now, I don't know if you know this, it doesn't start well. Why did the Lord say, send that for yourself? Shelach lecha. Why for yourself? For Moses? You know that just two chapters before, when God asked Moses to choose 70 elders, he said to him, gather for me 70 men from the elders of Israel, and then he anointed them. However, here he tells him to gather them for himself. Why? The reason is because originally it wasn't God's idea to send the spies. But God told them so many times that the land is a great place. It's a beautiful and plentiful one. Why do we need to check it? Did he not say that that land that I had selected for you is flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands? Yet they did not believe, and that, I want to tell you, reflected a complete lack of trust. But the spies did go. However, it didn't turn out well at all. The report was negative, and as a consequence of the response of the people, Israel lost 38 years of time of their history wandering in the wilderness where they were right at the door of the promised land. It was a waste of time. And it, it took the spies, I want to tell you, 40 days to cover 800 kilometers or 500 miles, and they covered it all. They, they, they could have covered it, by the way, just in 25 days by working only five hours a day. They overstayed there, and they, they all came back safely. By the way, no one was running after them. They also brought back some great fruits, figs, pomegranates, and grapes. The grapes were so big that it's written that one single cluster of grapes was carried on a pole between two men. That the land was plentiful. But there were in the land giants, and the report included them. This is what they said in verse 33. They said, there also we saw the Nephilim. The sons of Anak the, are descendants of the Nephilim. And we, they, we became like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Nephilim means in Hebrew, the fallen ones. The Greek Septuagint has gigantes, where we get our word giants in many of our translations. It was these giants who discouraged the people, and their response is seen at the beginning of chapter 14. This is what this, it says. It says, so all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. By this time, I want to tell you, they forgot all the promises of God and even his presence that was still obvious in the clouds that was following them. And notice how vulnerable a congregation of people can be when a bad report, one bad report comes in and see how fast and quickly it spreads. We see in verse 1, all the congregation lifted up their voice, all of them, they abandoned ship. So while complaining, and as is often a bad habit to do, they felt the need to find some scapegoats, and so they first accused Moses and Aaron. And that's not too bad, by the way. But then they accused God. They accused him directly. They asked, why has the Lord brought us here in this land to fall by the sword, to kill us? They came to the point of seeing God as an enemy when he wanted the best for them. However, the best part of the parasha is that out of the 12 spies who spoke words of discouragement, there were two, Joshua and Caleb, who did not forget their God. Notice that these two experienced the same situations as the other 10. They saw the same giants, but they had another perspective of things. They had faith. They had a vision, and God had endowed them with, with a supernatural faith. They understood the words of this great verse that we remember in Zechariah 4, 6, which says, Not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. They knew, they understood it was an impossible task. They knew they could not beat the Nephilim, but they knew that the battle is the Lord's, and there lie the secret of their victory. 
With God, these giants were not giants anymore. They were not only, they were actually, actually only in appearance. This is what this parasha is teaching us today. And as we read on in Numbers 14, we learn something great about our God. He is he's more saddened than angry. And here he is presented as so implicated. He even turns to Moses and says in verse 11, How long will these people reject me? And how long would they not believe me with all their signs which I have performed among them? Here is the creator of time and space, the one who lives in eternity, allowing himself to suffer in time for his creation, for man. His very nature compels him because he is love. He, it compels him to stand in love with Moses and with each one of us. This is the God of the scriptures that we have. And right in the midst of this chapter, right when one would have thought it was the end, in the midst of a great confusion, God proclaims his powerful prophecy and says in verse 21, As I live, all the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. It doesn't matter that some will accept or not. It will be filled with the glory of the Lord. And one last thing, this is when we are so blessed by what the two spies, the, you know, Joshua and Caleb, said in trying to encourage the people to go and conquer the land. They told the Israelites one thing that's, that is so strengthening. Okay? This is what they said. Listen to this. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they shall be bread for us. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear. Now I want to ask you something. What did they mean when they said there shall be bread for us? They were appealing to something they were very familiar with. What was the bread or the food that all the Israelites were eating at that time? Manna. The manna. And what is the particularity of the manna? is that they had to wake up early in the morning to pick it up before sunrise, because if they went afterwards, the manna will melt away. And so they were telling them, you know what, the Lord, the son of our righteousness, will rise against them and they will melt in front of us. This is the God that we have. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.